Sean Timothy Nelson was born August 21, 1959. He joined the Army in 1978, became a tank driver, and was honorably discharged in 1980. He got married in 1984 and became a very successful plumber. In 1988, his mother Betty died. After her death, he began abusing alcohol and methamphetamines. In 1990, his wife Susie filed for divorce. That same year, he had a motorcycle accident that left him with neck and back injuries. Then in 1992, his dad, Fred, also died. In June of 1994, all of his plumbing tools were stolen. With the combination of his stolen tools and his neck and back injuries, he could no longer work. He began to dig a hole in his backyard, telling everybody he was digging for gold. His utilities were eventually shut off, and in April of 1995, his girlfriend also left him. On May 17, 1995, Sean drove through an open gate at the Army's National Guard Armory on Mesa College Drive in San Diego. That location is right here. He entered the compound through one of three entrances. There's an entrance right through here. And there's a gate here. There's another entrance right through here with a gate right here. And there's a third entrance over here in the back with a gate through here off of Armstrong Street. I don't know which one he went into, but I do know that when he was in the armory, he got into one tank, tried to start it. It wouldn't start. He got out, got into a second tank, tried to start it. It wouldn't start. As he was getting into a third tank, an individual in the armory saw him started walking over there to ask him what he was doing, but the third tank started and he began to drive away. The individual who saw him then ran to a phone and called the police. Sean was driving off of the compound in a stolen M60A3 Patton tank. It's a 57 ton tank, which is 51.7 metric tons. And here is a photo of an M60A3 Patton tank. He was driving a tank very similar to this through the streets of San Diego. After driving out of the compound, he started to destroy many things in his path. The video starts off with him going down this street here, Ashford Street. And he is... Right here, he runs over this fire hydrant and then continues on and smashes a car, flattens a car that is parked right here in this driveway. Now, not wanting to get a copyright strike against me, I am using a video titled Sean Nelson Tank Pursuit GTA Edition. And you can see, you can watch this for yourself. You can see I'm 12 seconds into it down here. And the tank is just starting to go up on the sidewalk. And that is where he runs over that fire hydrant. And I will show you this piece of it. Comes around, the fire hydrant was just run over. And he goes up and completely flattens that car sitting in that driveway. If we go down to street view, you can see this was the fire hydrant he ran over, then continued on up the road a couple of houses and ran over the car that was parked right here in this driveway. If I turn this around and back it up slightly, Right about from this perspective, you can see in this photo in the upper right, the flattened car. You can see the fire hydrant in the background. You can see this house here with these windows that are barred and a, and a screen door on this garage door. Just beyond it, you see a house with these, looks like 4 by 4s on the porch. Back here at Google Earth, you can see the house back here with these, with, with, which what appears to be 4 by 4s on the, on the porch and the house with the screen garage door and the windows here that are kind of covered by that umbrella. But if we move up a little, you can see those windows that have those bars covering them. So this was the location where he ran over that car at the beginning of the video. So here I am at the corner of Ashford and Belden. He came down from this direction toward us. And took out that fire hydrant and then ran a car over that was parked right here. The car was parked here and he ran it over after he ran that fire hydrant over. 
After he ran over the car, he went up the street and made a left turn right here on Baghdad Street. We'll get out of street view. Roll up. He made a left turn here just across the street from this elementary school. I'm going to turn this around. And as he brought the tank down Baghdad Street, there was a truck with a trailer parked here, and he smashed the trailer, drove the tank down, ran into a van that was parked right here in front of this house, pushed the van backwards into a trash can, and then pushed the van and the trash can right through a motorhome that was parked right here. And here he is on Baghdad Street, just across from the elementary school parking lot. There's the truck with the trailer on it, and you can see what he does here. He comes through, smashes the trailer, rolls up, hits the van, hits the trash can, and pushes it all the way back right through this motorhome, and then runs the tank right into the motorhome. If you look at this photo, you can see this sewage drain cover right here. Back here at Google Earth, you can see that drain cover right here, and if we zoom in a little you get a better look at it down here at street view you can see this is the cover for the, the gutter drain and it was right here that that motorhome was parked that got run over by the van and the tank so he turned left off of ashford street onto baghdad came down in this direction and right in front of this house, there was a truck with a trailer. He ran the trailer over, so he hit the trailer up here, came through. There was a van parked right where this truck is. He pushed the van all the way back through here and rammed it into a motorhome that was parked where that truck is right there. So that motorhome was here and just got smashed. And then he continued on around the corner, headed down that way and smashed his next car right over there. After he ran the motorhome over, he made a left turn down Bend Street. And as I rotate this, he completely flattened a truck that was parked right here in front of this house. And here is the footage of him flattening that truck in front of that house next to the curb. If we go down to Street View... That truck was parked right here. And here is the spot where he ran over that white truck. In fact, this white truck here is parked in the spot where that white truck was parked when he ran it over with the tank. So after he ran that truck over, he made a right turn here at the corner of Ben and Armstrong. A right turn through here and headed up that way. So he ran the truck over that was parked here came down, made a right turn, went up Armstrong Street, drove the tank up to Beale Street, made a right turn, came down Blix Street, you can only make a right turn on it, and it was right here where this car is parked that he hit a car, flipped it up backwards over on top of a van. I'm going to rotate this. To approximately here so that car was parked here hit it with the tank flipped it up over on top of a van and then continued on so in this photo you can see the van parked right here part of the helicopter is blocking the camera view but you can see this van and there's a car here that he flips up over the top of it push play that's a minute 34 seconds into it And there you could see the car being flipped up over the top of that van. So after he went down Armstrong, made a right on Beale, made a right, came down Blix Street here. It was right here in front of these red bricks where he hit a car and flipped it up backwards over the top of a white van that was sitting right behind it. And then he continued on and made a left turn right there back onto Armstrong Street. Afterwards, he continued on. He made a left turn right here on Armstrong Street, and it was right 
right through here where he was running some trash cans over. He continued on down the road. And it was right in front of this house where there was a truck with a camper, a mini truck with a camper coming up. Tank started to go right toward him and the guy in the truck drove up on the sidewalk right here in front of this house. And here's a quick shot of him running that truck up onto the sidewalk. So as he came down this direction in the tank, it was right here in front of this house that that truck drove up on the sidewalk to avoid being run over by the tank. After running that truck up onto the sidewalk right here, he continued on and he attempted to make a left turn onto Beagle Street, but didn't quite make it. The tank went straight through here, almost hit this house. The person in the house thought the tank was going to come through the house, but he was able to stop the tank, back it up, complete the left-hand turn. He ran over this fire hydrant right here. If we go down to street view, you can see the fire hydrant. He went up through here, stopped it just before hitting the house, backed up, took this fire hydrant out, and then continued on down the road. After running the truck up on the curb right there, he came down through here, made a left turn or attempted to make a left turn, ended up driving across up into that yard, almost hitting that house right there. He backed up, went through here, took out that fire hydrant, and headed down Beagle Street in that direction. Here he is attempting to make that left turn onto Beale Street, Be uh, Beagle Street, didn't quite make it, almost hit the house, backed it up, and ran over the fire hydrant. And he continued down Beagle Street right here, and it was right here. in front of these electrical boxes that he was coming down the lane and he forced a car to stop and back up against the curb here before he ran that car over. Now here's the footage of him coming down the road toward that car. The car starts to back up. You can see the electrical boxes right there. Car gets out of the way and the tank continues on. And this is the location he was coming up. This is a slight uphill and there was a car that backed up right about in here where this car is now. I recognize it because of these electrical boxes. You can see these electrical boxes in the video. So that car backed up to roughly right in there to avoid being run over. After narrowly missing the car that stopped right about here where this car is parked, he continued on down the street and he made a left turn right here on Linda Vista Road. He continued down Linda Vista Road, went over the freeways. It turns into Convoy Street at this point. He took it all the way down to right here where this Costco is. And it was right here where he ran over this fire hydrant. Since then, the fire hydrant has been moved to approximately right in here. But this was the fire hydrant that he ran over as he passed by this Costco. So he drove up through here, took out this fire hydrant. Here on Convoy Street. Then went up and took out those two light signals right up there. And here he is running over the fire hydrant in front of that Costco. Then he continued on. And took out two light signals at the next intersection. This one right here. Went across the street. And took this one out right there. So after he hit this fire hydrant, those two light signal signals he took out were right up here. at this intersection, took this one out here, went across the street, and then took this one out right here. If we exit street view, point that north, he eventually made it up 
to this intersection where, the, where there is this Wiener Schnitzel right here. And if we go down to Street View, right about here, turn it around. You can see the Wiener Schnitzel and you can see this light signal. Now on the video, you see him come up, take out this light signal, and I know this is the intersection because of the uh, Wiener Schnitzel in the background. So here he comes up Convoy Street. Keep looking in the background over here. You're going to see the Wiener Schnitzel. There it is, right there. He takes out that light signal. It lands on top of the tank, and he carries it all the way down to the next intersection. So he came down Convoy Street. You can see the Wiener Schnitzel here in the background, and this is the light post that he ran over that landed on top of the tank, and he ended up dragging it all the way down Convoy until he made a left up there on Balboa. If we exit Street View, point this north again. He took this light pole out, this light signal out right here, continued on, and made a left turn on Balboa Street. And one of the things that I found interesting is when he made his left turn on Balboa Street, the light signal laying on top of the tank struck this light signal right here, and this light signal knocked it off of the tank. Here on Street View, you can see that light signal at the corner of Convoy Street and Balboa. And there's still a mark right there where that light pole laying on the tank struck this light pole and got knocked off the tank. So here he is making his left turn onto Balboa Street. You can see the light pole laying across the tank and then it hits this light pole which knocks it off the tank and then he continues on toward the 805 freeway. So he came down Convoy Street, made a left turn right here onto Balboa, and this is the light pole that knocked the light signal pole off the tank. And you can tell it's the original one because right here there is a huge dent right on the pole that is still there from when that light pole struck this light pole while it was on top of that tank. It fell off right here, and then the tank continued on up that way to get on to the 805 South. I've always been curious to see if there was a dent here on this pole, and sure enough, there's a nice big one still here. So this is definitely the original. Came down convoy, left turn on Balboa, up to the 805 freeway, entered, entered the 805 South on this freeway entrance right here through here, headed down, made it to this footbridge, then ran the tank into the pillar on this side, hit it twice. They think he was trying to knock it down to create a barrier between him and the police, but the tank did not have the ability to knock this pillar down. And here he is running the tank into the pillar of the footbridge. but he couldn't take it down. Afterwards, he continued on down the 805, took the transition right here to the 163 South, down through here, and it was just north of Genesee, this is Genesee Avenue right here, that he high-centered it in the middle of the freeway. Now here he is heading south on the 163. He decides he wants to jump the center divider, hits it, takes out a large section of it, high centers the tank, and gets stuck. That occurred approximately right here on the center divider. If we go down to street view, back up a little you can see this patchwork right here also if you notice just in front of this patchwork you'll notice that the center divider is put together in sections you can see from this line to this line that's one section and these sections go 
all the way down the freeway. If we go back here, you can also see from this point down, it's put together in sections all through here. But up here where the patchwork is, from here and behind it, you can see it's just one big section because it has been repaired as one big section. And this is about the place where the tank hit the center divider, rode over the top of it, straddling it, and came to stop right here. If we exit Street View, turn this north, I put a marker called Final Spot right where that patchwork is. And for those of you who want to know the coordinates where that final spot is, I can click on it, go to Get Info, and there you have the coordinates right here. You have the latitude of 32 degrees, 47 minutes, 46.36 seconds north, and a longitude of 117 degrees, 9 minutes, 26.74 seconds west. Some were speculating that he was trying to hop the divider so he could go back up north on the 163, exit here, and possibly do damage to the hospital that he accused of mistreating him after his motorcycle accident. He filed a $1.6 million lawsuit against him right here, the Sharp Memorial Hospital. He lost the case. The hospital countersued. He had to pay back over $6,000 in medical expenses and legal fees. So some were speculating that he was heading to this hospital right here to do damage to it. Ironically, he would end up succumbing to his wounds in this same hospital shortly after the tank rampage came to a conclusion. So there you have it. The May 17th, 1995 tank rampage through San Diego, California. Right here. On Google Earth.